Now the Najee watches it sail over his head in the end zone. And it's time last week. Halon Black, the running back, went off last week in the win against Bucknell. He goes down for a loss of one yard here on his first touch. Black, the running back, on third down and four. McLeod wants to take off. Spins his way free for a first down and a lot more. Ahead to the 46. And a gain of 15 yards on the ground, Roddy, on third and four. And Virginia anticipated it. They dropped number two, Stevie Bracey, into the middle of the field, almost like a spy, but it's good blocking, a missed tackle by the defensive line, and Jordan McLeod ends up converting. Virginia felt like, felt like Virginia knew what was coming, still not able to stop it. These two programs separated by just 58 miles, so JMU and its fan base very well represented. James Jackson, the TFL, Kalen Black, the running back, and he lost three there. The strength of this Virginia defense is that defensive front, Roy. Really experienced up front with guys like Jameer Carter, Aaron Falmui, and James Jackson has played a lot of football for this crew. This front seven, very experienced, very stout. Zach Horton in motion from his H-back position. And the screen pass to Phoenix Sproles with blockers and a first down into Virginia territory. He'll rumble his way for 16. Really nice job of blocking on the perimeter by the wide receivers of JMU. Springs Phoenix Sproles. A lot of numbers in the box for Virginia. Two blockers for two defenders. You've got Cam Butler pursuing from the inside, but the blocks by Taji Hudson and Zach Horton too much. Latrell Palmer in at running back. McLeod, the pump fake, he'll go the other way, wide open. A big gainer for JMU. Into the red zone is Hudson. First down and goal for the Dukes. It's double moves on both sides, and Jordan McLeod does an excellent job of looking to the field to move the safety, but the double move. Hudson in motion. The backwards pass is there. He wants to throw it. That's a JMU touchdown. Hudson to Sproles. 6 nothing Dukes. Second catch on that drive for Sproles. That one on third and goal meant everything. Certainly did. You dial up the trickery. The backwards pass to Hudson sucks up the Virginia defense. And then he delivers to the end zone to Phoenix Sproles. And Roy, go back to the third play of the game. They call that timeout to get the right play. Convert and then eventually put the ball in the end zone. Camden Wise on for the point after. Based on the two that we've seen so far. I would agree. Third down, and a problem with the exchange. Delandria dives on it. Virginia forced to punt. Virginia had a lot of struggle snapping the football out of shotgun last week. Ty Furness has done a really good job in the run blocking, but snaps have been an issue. Counted five bad snaps a week ago. The initial third down snap was a little low, and then that one really low. So Kurt Signetti, again, it pays off. He, did, he accepts the penalty, moves Virginia back. You get a bad snap. Now they're punting from the shadow of their own end zone. Daniel Sparks, one of the top punters in America, standing deep in his own end zone. Preseason first team all ACC. And the punt was blocked, and JMU recovers. A touchdown for the Dukes. Just complete and total disaster for Virginia. The punt takes a little long to get off. You're taught to one step it out of the end zone typically. Spending time in the 10. He came out pointing to his left ankle. He's been running routes here on the sideline. We'll see if he goes back in. Jones gets a first down, a seven yard pickup. Washington in that reception streak in motion. Calandria looks his way. Washington breaks free into JMU territory. Malik Washington makes a man miss. How about a touchdown for UVA? It's minutes to play, 14 to 7. Roy, this is a Virginia program that has been defined by resilience. You get hit early, down 14. What do you do? You dial up a little wheel route to Malik Washington, and he takes it the distance.
Bedridge on for the point after. Already 63 in the books here in game number two. As McLeod's back on the field, he wants to go long. And it's caught! Reggie Brown, the deep threat. Kyle, the transfer from Iowa State, ends up being nickel on a slot receiver. It's just a slot fade, and this is what Jordan McLeod did so well. Speaking of picks, who you got tonight? Texas, Alabama. Oh, man, you put me on the spot. Give me Bama. They're at home. Left side on second and short. Upended near the line to gain. It's loud on third down. McLeod will try to get to the edge. Off the pump fake. Stop short. Ushered out near the 20 by Harrard again. Inside the left hash on the way. And Wise connects. Watch Anthony, watch Anthony Calandria's legs. Calandria. Malachi Fields, a couple of big plays last week in the loss against Tennessee. He'll shove the pile across the 40. Harrison in motion. Jones, the deep handoff, driven down. Kamara. We got to protect Anthony Calandria again. Third stop for Mikhail Kamara. On third down, Calandria tries to step ahead. He did not. The ball comes out. Penalty marker flies. Jalen Green with a sack. Area of struggle for Virginia a week ago. Protection, especially on that right side from the tackle position. Gananana moved to tackle very recently. Only a few practices under his belt before that Tennessee game. And Jalen Green. McLeod with time. That's a first down for JMU. The ball may have popped out late, and we'll see. Reggie Brown caught it. Right past the marker. Doesn't have it for long enough, and Virginia ends up getting the stop. And in our estimation as well, indisputable video evidence to overturn the call of completion on the field, negating the JMU first down. Bottled up, driven down. James Carpenter, the former walk-on, number 99. They affectionately call, this is a technical term, Roy, a game wrecker. It's not often that you have a defensive tackle nose guard that pops off when you watch on film, but 99 does that. Kurt Signetti told us to play right there. I think the first time I heard from you this week getting ready for this game, Carpenter's name was the first name oh, yeah. that you referenced. He just popped on film after last week's win against Bucknell. Second and ten, Wahoo's showing pressure. McLeod delivers. That's another strike and a first down. Elijah Surratt, there he goes, tiptoeing down the sideline. You know, you asked about whether it's God-given ability, whether it's coach ability. Well, this time, Jordan McLeod, he's on balance. He's got a great platform, and he anticipates the throw. Dukes need ten. In the flats for Black. They won't get there. Virginia had that play well covered. More than 10,000 fans were supposed to make their way over the mountain, some 58 miles away, to take in their Dukes today, and they have showed up. They have been loud. Malachi Fields has been loud as well. Cavs one for four on third down. Hollins checks in at running back. It's 32% in that department a year ago. Des Kitchings calling plays. Calandria the pump fake. That's going to be stopped well short. Fields gave it the old college try, but he stopped short of the 40. Cavs without the services of Josh Ahern today. James Jackson has done a great job. And Black goes down. Cam Robinson. That first drive where they kind of got hit and then the field goal attempt. Ethan Davies back deep to receive this punt. A fair catch is called for. Not made comfortably. Davies dives on it. The other 20. Well, less than that. First incompletion for Calandria. Harris Jones tried to get to the edge. He could not. Lassoed by Jamri Cromwell. It'll be third down and long. Virginia had a lot of success early on with this wide zone play, but Tyreek Tucker. Gets penetration from the inside. Chroma gets 
penetration on the outside. And again, Virginia in a third and long. I like the big tackle wearing number nine. Oh, I love that. I am a big fan of small numbers on big people. Pressure. Fields has it. Was he in front of the line to gain? And the answer is yes. Calandria with all kinds of pressure in his grill right in the kitchen, and he stood tall. It's a big-time throw from a true freshman. He's got a defensive tackle, Tyree Tucker, bearing down on him. Delivers the ball at the last possible minute before Fields is out of his break. Fields turns around, catches it first down, Virginia. Five grabs for Fields for 53 yards. Calandria wants to go long again into JMU territory. Goes J.R. Wilson. And that's a massive pass up the middle into a tight window up the seam. To see what the stoppage of play is for because they were going with some tempo. Please reset the game clock. Four yard gain, second and six. Jones motions out, will cut back in, and there he is. Harris Jones rumbles ahead. That should be enough for another first down. Mike Hollins in it running back. He'll get the call. Hollins powers his way in for the Virginia touchdown. Mike Hollins coming on the sideline after scoring that touchdown. His little brother on the sideline to greet him. Big time drive for Virginia. And of course, it's number seven who's been the emotional inspiration for so many of these Virginia players as they try and heal through the tragedy. Mike Hollins all the way back and into the end zone. And we have a one score game in Charlottesville. This start has done a lot for his team, his program. And they're gonna have a chance in this second half as Virginia will get the football to start the third quarter. Taylor, thank you. A great start for Calandria, true freshman. Step foot on campus in January. Has a man and he's wide open. It's Kobe Pace. Kobe Pace to the house. It's just a, a verticals concept, but instead of using a receiver, you get Kobe Pace on a rail route up the seam. Watch the eyes of Anthony Calandria as he moves in the pocket. They're downfield. He knows exactly where he wants to go with the football. Two big passing plays. The first one to Malik Washington for 63 and a touchdown. The second from 75 yards out to Kobe Pace. Wouldn't be surprised to see him run it either. 12 personnel, a couple of extra tight ends. Third down and two. And the deep give goes to Black, and I don't know. I don't think so. Chico Bennett led the charge from their own 25. McLeod gets it. They'll set up the screen. And I don't think so. Down goes Sproles. Here comes UVA. Yeah, I think the question is, did he possess it in bounds? I'm not, I don't think that's the case. Also, it was forward progress stuff. Mike Hollins back on the field, rushes for a first down on a play that could have been reviewed. Instead, Cavs go tempo. It'll be first down. Boy, every play is looked at by the replay booth, and if they have a clear and obvious look at it, then there's no reason to stop the game. I think it was pretty clear that the ball was not recovered in bounds. We didn't hear the announcement on whether they declared forward progress was stopped, but I don't think there was... There was possession, firm possession inbounds. Cavs can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Calandria drops back. Jones dropped it. Two penalty markers come out. Back in Charlottesville, second down and goal. Kobe Pace, the running back, on the toss sweep. Pace to the edge, to the pylon. And he's in for the touchdown. Just a quick toss, race to the pylon. Second touchdown of the game, the first one through the air, the second on the ground, and the quick toss sweep gets the job done for head coach Tony Elliott's Virginia Cavaliers. Zach Horton lines up in the slot, that massive tight end. 
McLeod the other direction. McLeod dumps it off incomplete. Academic All-ACC last year started his career playing football at Columbia. Looming large wearing that number one jersey. And a fair catch made after a punt of 40 yards. See if the play call reflects that. He wants to throw it across the middle. And the traffic. How about a first down to Malik Washington? You know what, Roy? You don't got it. When you got a guy that can make throws like this, give him the keys on third down. I mean, that is a nails throw. There are three guys around Malik Washington, and he puts it in the perfect spot for the Northwestern transfer. He's been he's been unbelievable today, and those are, there have been some big time throws in there. Feeling confident, and on cue, intercepted Francis Meehan. It's a great play by Francis Meehan, who starts to the field side of the formation, and then because of the motion, gets out to the sideline and makes the pick. It's a great play. Super senior records his first interception of 2023. Play action McLeod. How about a wheel route the other way? Lobs it up, nearly picked off. Third and seven. McLeod across the middle. The crosser over the official is incomplete. Scrolls was open and Kyle. How hard would that have, that pass have been to catch? And the umpire dunks right in front of it at the last minute. It's That's tough. pretty distracting, yeah, right? It's pretty tough, yeah. Fair catch made at the six. Anthony Calandria, 15 of 17, 279 yards. Last pass he threw was intercepted. Trying to get out of his own end zone here, and he does just barely. But the sack will make it third down and a long ways to go after a loss of five. Kind of make sure. Stomach go into your throat, just a little nervous. Conservative call, Hollins upended at the one, and that's it. He'll lose another yard, it'll be fourth down. JMU, give the defense credit here, Roddy, forcing the quick three and out. You have to give the defense a lot of credit. Torres Jones shoots through and is able to get the tackle, and Virginia goes backwards to their own one-yard line before they have to punt it. Last time they put it out of their own end zone, Roy, got blocked for a touchdown. Now you're going to go into punt safe. Everybody condensed down. you got to one-step this punt. Get it off. Sparks an inch in front of his own end zone on that back line. Gets away a beauty. Cheese Surratt tracking from his own 47. Looking for the convoy. JMU starts in plus territory at the Virginia 45. Palmer, the running back. Cloud wants to go back to the air. Tried to escape. A penalty marker comes in. Will be sacked for a loss of two. Under four to go in the third. And McLeod, another strike to Zach Horton. Tyson Lawton in at running back. Dukes have used four different ball carriers today. Lawton churning the legs. Keeps the play alive, and Lawton makes it first and goal. Power running for number seven. He's in the pile. James Jackson had a shot at him. He had a safety come down, have a shot at him. But Tyson Lawton at 5'9", 205, a load to tackle. 16 yards of Yak. After contact, into the end zone for a touchdown. Now the sixth year senior, second score of 2023. Well, Roy, JMU didn't convert on the drive after the interception, but they ended up flipping the field to get a short field on this possession. And Tyson Lawton gets him back in this game. Uh, it's starting to feel like Uncle Mo has shifted again. Washington approaching 100 yards through the air. And officially after a gain of three, Calandria, RPO game. 
Fires it to Jones. That's what the freshman can do. Paris Jones in the plus territory. Cuts it back. All the way down inside the 15. Well, it looked initially like this was a design quarterback draw, but Calandria gets stopped almost right away, so he decides to scramble, see a guy open downfield. Sure, Paris Jones, you take it in the open field. And Jones shows off the speed. He's had a couple of times where he's gotten out in the open. And he'll get it. Hollins waving his way to the end zone. Make it two. Touchdown, Cavaliers. Finish it. And Virginia absolutely does that. This running back room has been tremendous. Remember the big play by Paris Jones got them down close. Kobe Pace has done a really nice job today. But Mike Hollins has been the finisher down near the goal line. Goes airborne for a second one. Beveridge's extra point is true. They'll set up the screen for Kalon Black. And shoved down short of the 25. No fair catch, Davies. Double teamed and went down hard. Hollins motions out. Calandria is going to be sacked and he was hit hard. Back at the 30. It's really perfect defense called by JMU. You get the blitz from the field. This Sproles will switch sides. Trips right for JMU. McLeod heaves one deep. And that pass is caught. Reggie Brown. You get a, a little five-yard curl and then a corner route behind it. It's cover two. The corner stays up. And you fire that hole. Dukes will show tempo. Third down. Less than a yard. Palmer's got it and then some. Upended at the 40. A nine-yard pickup on third down. Cohen King brought him down. JMU in plus territory. Good tackle by Cohen King or else I think Latrell Palmer hits his head on the goalpost. JMU's physicality, trying to run the football. It's who this offense wants to be. They haven't done it consistently today. But on this drive... They've looked good handing it off. 123 rush yards so far. Palmer's done some damage. Kalon Black has as well. Seen Wayne Knight on the field. Here's Lawton. Big gainer, Lawton. Hit of the 26. He'll be dropped there. A 13-yard gain. West Hall with a tackle. And some physical running right now for the Dukes. Yeah, and a physical offensive line as well, creating holes. That's the thing that after a delay is the hardest to get back going. It's that physicality and the run fits not quite on for Virginia. Two schools separated by just 58 miles. They haven't played more than a generation. Here's Lawton to the edge. Lawton with a full head of steam to the front pylon. Touchdown, JMU. Yeah, I would. You were down eight, now you're down five. You want to make it a field goal game if you kick the extra point. Knight motions out, McLeod. Backside pressure, McLeod lost the handle. And the play blown dead. Virginia's defense, a big stand on the two-point play. On second down, Calandria fires long. Brought in Malik Washington. What a play by Malik Washington on the back side of this. The ball is not thrown perfectly. It's to the inside. He's got to jump, flip his hips, and make a catch while being contacted. Sugar huddle for the Cavs. Holland straight ahead. And I don't think so. Torres Jones. Ball is snapped. It came in low. Holland. Can't do that here. I think you try and find Malachi Fields. Fields has been Mr. Reliable. Calandria keeps the play alive. Throws it away. Dukes have two timeouts to work with, trailing by five. Sparks gets it away, end over end.
Did it cross the plane? Yes. JMU with two timeouts. Here's time for McLeod. Has a man open. That'll move the chains. And an empty move ahead to the 44. From Jordan McLeod. Second catch of the game for 13 and White. From the 50. On second down, McLeod. Pocket collapses. And the pressure got to him. Here's a penalty marker. Jameer Carter got there. Six in the box for the Cavs. McLeod across the middle. Has Sproles. Stopped at the 30. It'll be third down. Tavon Kyle with a tackle. Gain of 15. It was a beautiful route by Phoenix Sproles. Man to man, he and Tavon Kyle just creates that little bit of separation to hook up for his quarterback. Dukes maintain their timeouts. On third down, Jordan McLeod going long. At the goal line and incomplete, and here come two penalty markers. Sanker trying to defend Surratt. And this should result in a first down for JMU. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15-yard penalty. First down. Jonas Sanker. He had excellent coverage, Roy. It's just at the last minute... As the receiver tries to stop, he grabs the breastplate and, and interferes with Surratt's ability to make the catch while going down. Lost composure at the last minute. It's a tough play for a defender. Approaching a minute to go. They'll fake it to Black. Roll it out to Sproles. Made one defender miss. Tackled from behind, crossing the tip. Pre-snap survey by McLeod into the flats. Wide open is Kalon Black for the touchdown. Every team in the country has this play. Look at Cam Robinson, the freshman linebacker. He's responsible for the back unit. Two slants from the outside to try and pick. Cam Robinson just gets caught in no man's land. He hesitates. His eyes aren't in the right place. And you get a wide open back. They are really excited about the true freshman, Cam Robinson, but your head is swimming as a true freshman, and sometimes you lose track of the main thing, which in that case, he's got the back. You've got to be out there. Especially after that last touchdown to regain the lead. Black motions out, and that could have been costly. Madden sends it deep. And Jones. Calandria with Mike Collins. And Calandria gonna be sacked. He can't take a sack. Can't take a sack there. It puts us back behind the chains. You have to use a timeout in that situation. It's good pressure by Jamie. Really good coverage on the back end by JMU. But there's plenty of time there. First meeting in 40 years between these two teams. Calandria. Penalty marker comes in. Duke show pressure. Calandria has it batted down. It'll be fourth down. James Carpenter. Fourth and 20. Calandria's got to get rid of it, and he does. Deep ball with a man open, and it's incomplete. Starling was open. This performance by JMU coming into a Power 5 stadium, dealing with the things that they dealt with on the field today. And there were times where Virginia looked like they had an opportunity to run away with this thing. And the Dukes are able to go on a road.